Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come into your presence today, examine our hearts. Lord, if we have any sins that stand between us and you, we ask for your forgiveness now. Wash us clean with the blood of Christ so we can stand before you without shame, without guilt. We lay all our troubles and worries at your feet. Fill us with your love and may we glorify you by sharing that love with our family, friends, and neighbors. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. Okay, our scripture reading today is Matthew 17, 20. That's the same verse from last week. And James 1, verse 6. Okay, let's read the verses together. He replied, Because you have so little faith, truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. This is the word of God. We started the topic of faith a few weeks ago. If you remember, we talked about how faith is having confidence in what we can't see. Not because someone said so, but because we can see and feel the evidence of what is there. Last week, we talked about an example of what faith can do. Our verse tells us that faith can move mountains. We see many times in the Gospels that faith can perform miracles. So how much faith do we need to perform and witness these miracles? Do we need a mountain-sized faith to move a mountain? I used to wonder about this a lot when I was young. Maybe you do too. I learned about Abraham, Moses, Joseph, David, Paul, and all these people who seemed like superstars of faith. There was no way I could be them. I'm just an ordinary kid. But what does God say? In Matthew 17, 20, he says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Have you seen a mustard seed? It isn't big at all. In fact, it's pretty tiny. And God says that's all the faith we need. Last week, we looked at a story from Matthew 8 about a Roman centurion. The Roman centurion had faith so strong, he only needed Jesus to say the word, and he knew his servant would be healed. There's another story in Mark 5 about a woman with extraordinary faith. This woman was sick for many, many years, and no one could heal her. But her faith was so strong that she was healed just by touching a corner of Jesus' cloak. Now I want to take a look at a story from Matthew 14. I'm sure you know this story. The disciples saw Jesus walking on water. They thought he was a ghost at first. When they realized it was really him, Peter called out to Jesus, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Jesus said, come. So Peter stepped out of the boat and began walking on water. Can you imagine? 
His faith allowed him to perform a miracle, walking on water. But what happened? He saw the wind and he was afraid and began to sink. Then he cried out to Jesus, Lord, save me. Remember, faith is confidence. When Peter saw the wind and the waves, he became afraid. So what happened? Why did Peter, who was walking on water, suddenly start to sink? Well, it says he became afraid. When he first saw Jesus walking on water, he had faith. He believed. He was confident. He knew if Jesus said, come, he would be able to do it. But then instead of looking at Jesus, he started looking around. He saw how the wind was blowing and how the water was, you know, becoming waves because of the power of the wind. And he realized he was walking on water. People can't walk on water. Look at the storm that's around me. How can I, how can I be doing this in this storm? And he lost his confidence. He lost his confidence. The faith was still there, but his faith was no longer a confident faith. And he started to doubt. You see, in James 1, 6, it says when we ask, we have to believe. But we have to believe without doubt. Because if we have doubt, we become like the wind and the waves. We go back and forth, back and forth. It's not so much that we lose our faith, but if we, if we lose our confidence, if we trust in Jesus and then we stop trusting in him, and then we trust in him, we stop trusting in him. If we believe in God and then we forget about God, we believe in God and we forget about, we keep going back and forth, back and forth then whatever power that we have in God, that keeps going back and forth too. It's like turning on the light switch, right? If you turn off the light switch, the electricity is still there, but it's just not connected, right? Our faith doesn't necessarily disappear, but it gets disconnected from God. When we doubt, it's like turning off the light switch. And so, Whatever God wants to do through us, whatever power God wants to give us, whatever miracles God wants to perform in us, if we have doubt, we turn off that light switch. We lose our confidence. And God can't perform those miracles through us or in us because we block off the power. So we don't need to have a mountain-sized faith. We don't have to be these great, huge men and women of faith to have the power of God. We can have the tiny, tiny, tiny mustard seed size of faith, but we have to believe with confidence. We have to believe without doubt. Now, does it mean that we can't doubt God at all? No, that's part of our growth. That's part of growing in our faith. We can question God. We can ask questions. We can doubt from time to time. But, but if we want the type of faith to move mountains, we need to learn to trust God, to believe in God, even when there's a storm around us, like Peter. Okay? to have that kind of belief, like the Roman centurion who said, I don't know how it works, but you know, if you say the word, I know it'll get done. Or have the faith like the woman who didn't need all of Jesus, just a little tiny piece of his cloak. If we have that kind of faith, then we can move mountains. Let's pray. Dear God, when we look at the people in the Bible, they seem so big. 
It's hard to imagine that we can be them, that we can do the things that they did. But in your word, you have told us that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, if we believe without doubting, we too can move mountains. We too can perform miracles. But like Peter, when we see the circumstances around us, we lose sight of you. We look at what the world says instead of what you say. So Lord, we ask that you help us to have faith. Not a mountain-sized faith, but a faith with no doubt. Help us to believe in you, trust in you, regardless of our circumstances. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, announcements. Uh, the first one is the same as last week. Our in-person worship has begun. So if you can, please come and join us at 11 a.m. in the Daniel Chapel. Uh, the second announcement is a new one. Uh, we are going to start having our online Bible study this week on Fridays at 5 p.m. The Zoom link for the Bible study will be sent to your parents via Kakao, so please ask them to check. Uh, if they did not receive it, then please ask them to contact me and I will send it to them, okay? I hope to see all of you there. Okay, let's recite the Lord's Prayer together, okay? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. I hope you have a wonderful, blessed week. Bye.